While using Elementor, you need to get your settings right. For example, the site identity is going to talk about what you see here. For example, if I go to my website, I see that the site name is listed as my blog, but I could change this to my business name so that that is what people see when they get to my website. So I'm going to reload this and just visit my website and you'll see now it has take a press right here yet in the settings I just changed the site name. You can also change the vision or the description of your site and say this is a channel for WordPress things. And once I do that, I can update and notice that once I reload, this is already live for my site. Now, there are other things that you can add to your site like a logo or a favicon. And the favicon is it's a little logo that shows up there. So let me just use this for my media, update it. If we go and reload here, you'll see that we have this little favicon showing up and we make it look much better inside the browser. So you can do the same thing if you have a logo to add your site and that will show up here. So that's how we deal with the site settings inside our Elementor. You can also choose to have a background that can either be a type of color or it can be an image. So for example, a color or it can be an image you choose by uploading here and you'll have it over so you can choose to either position it in the center or choose to repeat it across the site or you can choose it to have a different feel depending on the size of the image you can choose its size whether to contain and just stay within the boundaries of the site or to cover by having one big image going all over so you can center it and give it different position depending on how your image and how you want it to look on your website so you can also choose a gradient and that would show up inside your site so Let's say you choose one color to be black and then you choose the other to be pink. You can have it in different locations by adjusting this to know what kind of gradient you're going to have. And you can change the angle from all across different directions. And that's how you make sure that your background looks as you always wanted it to be. In the settings again, you can choose your layout and determine what width you want to have your website to be. So I can choose to increase it and make it 12 by 80, 1280 pixels wide and then the, the height will go as much as my content will take me. So you can also choose to have a different space in between the widgets by setting it here and you can also add different breakpoints for the mobile and the tablet. Maybe your mobile has to be 250 and then your tablet will be 760. Now you can research more about the breakpoints you want by looking through Google to find out what you want, but these are mostly the usual breakpoints that we do have. In the settings, we also can set up for our images to be handled by Lightbox. Now Lightbox essentially makes all the images that you have on your website clickable, expose a bigger image. So let me show you by example. I'll save this, come back here, add an image from my widgets to this point and I'm going to add a relatively smaller image. I'm going to choose to reduce this in size and maybe say it was a thumbnail and I'll left align it. Now I'll link it to the media file itself and I can choose to make it a light box. So what happens is that whenever I click on this, it pops up with that easy in and exposes it into a bigger image. So in your site settings, you can choose to have light box stand on for all your images so that they can easily pop up and they can do the different things. So you can even add a title, you can add a description to the image so that it's more interactive with the people that are using it. So for example, we have the title here and the description of our images. So if I choose to have none for this and update this, when I click on it, you will see right down here, we no longer have our title and our description showing up because I've disabled them inside the light box. So this gives you a general feel of what will be across the whole site. You can change the text color on the light box and make other settings in here. 
Now, if you want to attach custom CSS, maybe you're well advanced with this, you will need to have the pro version. There's a link inside this video description for you to support the channel by buying from Elementor the pro version, and you can use it so that you can add your own custom CSS to your website when you use it. So if you don't know much about custom CSS, you don't need to worry about that, but this would be a good feature for people who are developers. And lastly, if you choose to add additional settings, Things, they open up inside Elementor in the admin area and you will see all these different settings that you can add to your style to advance and be able to do much more with your Elementor from this point forward. But the basics of using this box, the settings box, the site settings is essentially that. You set your colors, your fonts, your typography, your buttons, how they'll look, your light box, your layout, backgrounds, and what will be generally shared across the whole site. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet to this channel. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.